Hi, welcome back to Danny Harris Arts. In this part four segment of this uh, black crappie wood carving project, I'm gonna be making the eyes. Uh, in the past, I've used glass eyes, but I've decided I wanna make them this time. So when I get started here in a minute, I'll tell you why and how and uh, what gave me the idea to do it. So I'm gonna get started. So I'm starting the eyes and what I've done here is I've gotten a piece of wooden dowel and I got it close to the size I needed on this crappie. It needed to be 15 millimeters. This was a little bit bigger, so I took it on the sander and belt sander and just rounded it down a little bit. And uh, so it would fit the socket of the eye. So, um, and then I drilled a hole in it for the pupil. If you can, as you can see, that's a little got a little depth to it, because a pupil in the iris is actually a hole. It's down in the eye. The, the, it's got depth in it, so I did that. So when I paint it black, it's kind of hard to see there, but it's got depth to it. And then I painted the base color on it, and I just used on this. I just used um, this Deco Art acrylic. And this is cadmium yellow. And I use uh, Jeff Lunsden liquid scales, and this is pale gold. And then I also used a little bit of uh, this Perlex pigment powder, and this is brilliant gold. And I just mixed them all together. The pigment powder won't show that much, but it'll have just a little bit of a glint to it. I don't know if you can, if that shows up on camera or not, but. It's got a little bit, so I just painted the base color on it, and then um, and now I'm going to start adding black to it. I've got my reference photos here that I'm going to go off of, and let me talk about that a second. Um, crappie, a lot of fish have a teardrop-shaped pupil. And I'll show you what I mean here. I know you I know you've seen it if you looked at fish very often. The pupil has a almost a teardrop shape. But and one of the reasons I decided to do this make of myself is all the commercial eyes glass eyes you get for crappie have that teardrop shaped pupil well the crappie in my area and every black crappie or white crappie I've ever seen don't have that teardrop it's almost round it is it's not perfectly round it does have a little bit of a I don't know what the geometrical term would be for it, but it's 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 not perfectly round it's just kind of wobbly round I, I wish I knew the ge geometric term for it um, so that's what I'm doing with these is, um, I just drilled it out by hand and I just used, all I've done was to use the Dremel with a carbide bit and started and, and got it to the diameter I needed and then, uh, and then painted the inside black. So, um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting the, um, let me get this reference down here in the shot if I can. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start painting black on it. Just, they have, crappie have kind of like a bar through the eye. So I'm going to start that and then just start adding a little bit around it. And um, just cover, kind of covering up this gold. Uh, let's go ahead and use this brush. And I'm doing this right now. This is, I haven't, the only thing I've done off camera is cut these. This is the first time I've ever attempted this. So if it looks horrible and I decide not to do it, then you're gonna know about it. <laughs> but if it turns out good, then you you can follow along with me and see um, my progress on it. 
Now I did, uh, I want to give a shout out to Bo Weissman. Uh, he's the one that showed me this technique that he uses. And uh, I met Bo through, um, I actually found him on YouTube a long time ago when I first started carving. I saw one of his videos of him carving a, uh, a, uh, a fin, showing how to carve a fin for fish. And then, uh, and he's from Sweden. And then I'm, when I went to the World Taxidermy and Fish Carving Championship, he was a competitor there. And he had several carvings, but the one that, I, that stands out to me was a, a saltwater permit that he carved. And uh, it was just beautiful. I mean, it looked like a, I mean, it looked like a real fish. I mean, it looked like it could just swim off the, the display he had it on. And he ended up winning first place for it. And also, he won a world title for it. Uh, so he's he knows his stuff. And I'm in a Facebook group with him. And... Uh, and he's kind of critiqued my stuff along the way, which is very welcome. And uh, giving me a lot of good pointers. But he uses this technique because uh, he had the same problem. He didn't, he couldn't find eyes that he liked or thought looked good or just, or they were hard to get. So he started making them himself. So I'm going to attempt his, his technique. He made a video on it and sent it to me. And uh, so I've got all the components I need for it. And I'll show you, you'll see later in the video. It, it involves a barbecue rotisserie. <laughs> and a high build epoxy resin. And the resin is the uh, what they use for uh, wrapping the guides on fishing poles. It's a fairly thick resin. And I'll show you that here in a little bit too. And if you look here in the reference, most fish have a little gold ring around the pupil um, some of them are more pronounced and this is just another eye stuck on here is because it's just a little bit different but you can see the little tiny gold sliver around it this one's more pronounced and it doesn't go completely around like some of them do and that was the other thing on the glass eyes you get that little gold ring was went all the way around it So I'm going to do this and where it doesn't go all the way around it, just part way. And right now I'm just kind of using a dry brush, not much paint on it. I want some of that gold to show through. Um, this black that I'm putting down.
back over where I can see it. And I may use some of this black pigment powder I got too. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to. And I've got these tiny, tiny little Q-tips. That I'm going to apply it with. And then what I'll do here in a little bit, and I'll show you that, I mean, you'll see it, but part of the process is um, building up the eye um, with the epoxy. Uh, and this is, uh, let me get this here. This is Flex Coat, and it's a high build form formula. So it's kind of thick and you even let it set for a few minutes and let it thicken up before you put it on. So your first step is to fill up the pupil and let that harden or almost set. It doesn't have to be completely, but let it set. And then um, put another layer on the pupil and the, and the, uh, the iris. And it'll start forming a little bit of the cornea, a little bit of the curve of the cornea. But you let that set and cure. And then you put another layer on it, a little thicker layer. And then you, and then what I'll do is I'll hot glue it to a disc. And then it goes on a barbecue rotisserie and, and rotates slowly. And it keeps that third coat kind of in the center and it builds up the cornea in a uh, the curved circular uh, radius they are so there's a little bit of sparkly in there from the gold so I'm going to add a little bit of this brilliant gold in there this pigment powder You know, you can buy one of these, this size. I think I, these were $6 in this size. And then I've got a set of smaller ones. I think the whole set, there was uh, 12, I think. No. Yeah, 12 small different colors of this in it. I think it was about $25. But even this will last you. <laughs> <laughs> Even this size will last you forever because it doesn't take much on these pigment powders. And this, I probably will never have to buy another bottle of Brilliant Gold unless I spill it or something. So I'm going to take a little bit of this Brilliant Gold here and let's say it doesn't take much. And you'll be seeing me use powders when I get ready to paint the crappie too. And I'm going to put that right on the edge of that gold ring there. And then there's a little bit Maybe around the edge here. Then to just give it a little bit of an iridescent. And right there, 
right now it may be a little extreme but i think once you get the epoxy on there it will uh it will tame that down somewhat so let's bring the in here on this side. I don't think I cut this one for this side. And for the top part of here, for the uh, the eyeball itself, I'll form that with uh, epoxy putty and set it, it'll set with epoxy putty and then they'll form the top of the eyeball with the epoxy putty as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, since I got pigment powder on there, I'm going to go spray that with a fixative. Um, I've got some uh, satin polyurethane that I'll just spritz it and it'll set them powders in place. And then I'll do the other eyes and then I'll, when I get ready to put the epoxy in that, I'll show, I'll show that uh, putting the epoxy in and then attaching it to the... Uh, rotisserie but right now <laughs> i've got to stop and go attach the rotisserie to a uh, to some kind of uh, mount that'll hold it and then i gotta uh, get a plate I'll probably just cut a piece of plastic or plexiglass and then i can i'll hot glue these to the plexiglass and then that that way I can pop them off when it's done. So I'll be back. Okay, so I've got the eyes painted and I've got a little bit of the uh, epoxy mixed up here. And I've let the epoxy set for a few minutes so it starts getting thick. And then I'm gonna start adding it into the pupils here. Try not to get any air bubbles in it. By letting it set, the air bubbles come out. And then uh, they don't show up in your finished product. I may not have mixed enough epoxy. And this is just kind of a practice set. So I'm not, um, I'm not 100% sold on this uh, paint scheme here. I was just kind of practicing with it, but I wanted to practice with these eyes before I put them on. And they may be fine. They may work out fine. I may use them after all. And mix quite enough epoxy. Let me mix just a little bit more.
when you mix it you're gonna get some air bubbles but if you let it set for a couple minutes they'll rise to the top and then I've got a little uh, a little hand torch that all I have to do is touch it with that flame and then bubbles pop immediately and just like that they're done all right let me fill the rest of these holes up here Still didn't quite make enough. I don't know, maybe it is. Still got a little bit left in the cup here. Nope. It's not gonna drip off. I want it to be just slightly concave on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a tiny bit more. So that there's no air bubbles in there. probably can't tell but I've got the pupil hole filled and it's kind of flush with the eye so after these uh, after these cure for a couple hours I'll put another layer on and start including the the uh, rest of the iris. And then I'll let that layer cure a little bit and then I'll add another layer on top of that and then I'll put it on the rotisserie and let it let it turn until it cures and we'll keep it centered. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> so I'll get back with you on that.
Okay, so I built me a little apparatus here that has a, uh, a little rotisserie. And then with this plate, I've hot glued the eyes onto this rotating plate. Um, I'm gonna let it set up just a little bit more because it's still just a little bit runny. And, uh, but once it sets up just a little bit, then I'll, then I'll set it up vertical like that where it'll um, rotate and keep it centered. And matter of fact, that might be enough. But I'll let it rotate like that until it cures. And then I'll put another layer on it and uh, build the corny up even more. And I may end up doing that several times till I get the desired height of the cornea. Y'all hear that water? This is a this is an old railroad track culvert right here, and the railroad tracks used to run right through here. My house is 60 feet that way, <laughs> so yeah, we used to hear the trains all the time. But you got used to it. I mean, even at night, you didn't even know one come by. But the creek that runs here is out of my pond, uh, which is just about 70 yards through the woods there, and it runs year round. The, the creek's spring fed, so the water's always running, especially after heavy rain like we've had the last couple days. But it runs down along the side of my house here, and in the springtime, if our windows are open, we can hear it. Or if I'm sitting on my deck carving, I can hear it. Um, it's just one of my favorite places on the property out here. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate y'all watching this part four of the Black Crappie Wood Carving Project. And uh, you saw me make the eyes in this one. I wanna thank my good friend, uh, Bo Weissman, for sending me the video to do these. Bo is from Sweden, and he is a world-class fish carver and he won um, first place and a world championship world title last year at the world taxidermy and fish carving championship which is where i met him i'd actually seen his videos before uh i ever met him up there and uh and it didn't really dawn on me till after um we got back and i was watching some videos um uh, and I came across his video again that I had watched before on, fin on carving fins, and then it hit me. <laughs> and uh, but we ended up we're in the same Facebook group, a couple of same Facebook groups. But um, long story short, he sent me a video on how to do these eyes. Uh, this is something that he developed and he uses on all his projects. And uh, but he gave me permission to use this video to post on my channel, and he's going to be posting his on his channel pretty soon. Uh, I don't think he has yet. And his is a, probably a little more detailed than mine. Uh, but so go check his channel out. I'll leave a description, I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below. And uh, go check him out, subscribe, give him a thumbs up. And uh, but I really like how they turned out. Um, they're more lifelike than any glass I've ever seen. And, and, this, and that's only my first time I've ever done it. <laughs> So I've actually got eight more going right now that I will use uh, two of them on this project. This was just a practice run, uh, but even these, I like how they turned out. They're just so much more lifelike than any glass eye that you get. Uh, and the, I think part of the trick is uh, drilling out the pupil. That's, and that's, Bo does that on his, he drills out the pupil and it just gives it a deep black that you can't get on a glass eye because they, they paint the inside of the glass and it's, you can see reflections in it sometimes and it just doesn't have that deep void look 
that like a real pupil has on a fish. The other thing is on a crappie, the pupil is not teardrop shaped like it is on other fish. And every glass eye that I've seen on the market for a crappie has that teardrop shaped pupil and they, they just, that's just not accurate. Um, on the crappie, they're round. Uh, they're not perfectly round, and I don't know what the geometrical terminology is for what shape they are, but they're not perfectly round. So, so by doing that by hand, I didn't even use a drill bit. I just used a, a, a bit in the uh, Dremel and kind of wallowed out the hole uh, so it's not perfectly round, but uh, it just gives it more, more lifelike, more depth and more lifelike appearance. Um, but anyway, I um, appreciate y'all watching. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you like these videos. It really helps my channel out. Uh, but I will see y'all on part five, which I will be mounting these, mounting the, the eyes and the fins and gessoing the fish, getting it ready for painting. So appreciate y'all watching, and I'll see you on round five.